All right, welcome to uh, day two of our price controls, our price ceilings, price floors. Uh, unit plan today, price floors. Price ceilings the first day, price floors the second day. All right, so we open up the a unit with this question. So Spangler Candy, they're a uh, American company and they're, um, they have a factory in Ohio and the CEO says, hey, we're gonna move the factory to Mexico. What was the one thing he said, if this one thing was different, we would keep it in Ohio. Have your students guess what the one thing is. So they guess, they guess, they guess, go to the next slide. Now, what we've done in this lesson is we've taken a Planet Money podcast um, on, uh, it's on a specific price floor on sugar. And so what we've done is we've taken like sort of the relevant clips from that podcast and woven them throughout the slides. So you're never playing like a huge, this is the longest chunk you would play. So you're never playing like a really, really long chunk of this podcast. It's usually, you know, 20 seconds or less. Like I said, this is the longest chunk. So this little uh, icon right here will play. I, I just need one thing. We'll People play the excited. clip. And then I, I asked them to guess what's the one. I'm not going to go through the clip, but basically what he says and what this text says, he says, he says, if there was no price floor on sugar, there's a price floor on sugar. If there wasn't a price floor on sugar, I would keep my factory in the United States. But there is, so I have to move it to Mexico. All right, so what is a price floor? It's a minimum price. Basically, the government says the price cannot go below this amount. This is the minimum this good can cost. All right. Now, price floors, again, like it's a little confusing because you know a, 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 price, a price ceiling that matters is on the bottom and a price floor that matters is on the top. So it's like the opposite of a house. So a price floor down here is not going to matter. Remember, it's like a minimum price. So if the government is saying, hey, the price of bread can't go below a cent, the minimum it can be is a cent. Well, it's nowhere near a cent. So it's not going to affect the market. So it's only price floors that are above the equilibrium price that matter. Basically, the market is trying to go here, but it gets stuck at the price floor. The price floor stops it from going there. All right, so what are the consequences? So it's a lot like a price ceiling. Now we have a gap developing between quantity supplied and quantity demanded. All right. So just to show that the price floors are real, we have, again, another clip from the podcast. The U.S. government will guarantee this minimum price for sugar that is not to drop below, quote, 22.9 cents per pound, end quote. So this is a real thing. There is a price floor on sugar. That's the that's the the um, quote from the podcast. And here we have, we actually just, let's make this real for the students. So we just put it right here, 23 cents. That's the price floor. Now, who loses because of the price floor? You can ask your students. All right, so who loses in the case of a price floor? Now, they should be able to come up with consumers. Consumers have to pay higher prices. In the sugar example, the market price was uh, 8 cents per pound, and now it's 23 cents per pound. So that is a lot more. Okay, and again, we have another clip from the podcast showing that. Over the last decade, the price you pay in the United States, it's about 15 cents more than you pay outside the country. 15 cents more per pound of sugar. 15 cents extra per pound of sugar, if you're in the business of making candy, adds up to a lot of money. We're using 100,000 pounds a day. That's $15,000 a day. That's $75,000 a week. Multiply that by 52 weeks, it's three to four million dollars. Three to four million dollars a year. That's what these guys call the sugar penalty. Over the last all right, so that shows you, you know, just how impactful, you know, this price floor can be and how much consumers can lose out from it. So there's this gap that um, develops between producers and consumers where producers would like to supply a lot more at that higher price, whereas consumers want to buy a lot less at that higher price. So now instead of a shortage, we're going to get a surplus in the market, right? Okay, now what happens with the surplus? Well. Let's go back here. What happens with the surplus? Do producers actually produce this excess amount? So oftentimes they won't. They'll know, okay, the consumer's only going to want this much, so I'll produce this much. This much. Sometimes, though, the producers can lobby the government uh, to buy up the, um, the extra, the surplus. In that case, that's a win-win for them. They're getting the higher price, and they're producing all they want. And so to illustrate this, we have a clip from a video, an NPR uh, Planet Money video, talking about this policy from the 1970s where there was a price floor of milk 
So there's all this excess milk and the government agreed to buy it up. So here's the video. Let's play the video and just show you one thing about it. Starts in the middle. But the thing about milk is... And the reason for that is the beginning's kind of convoluted. You just need to set it up that there's a price floor on milk. So there's an excess, there's a surplus of milk. And then you can go through hard to the, less, uh, the rest of the video, which is which is pretty good. A couple of pause points where you can ask questions for your students. This one's more of a fun question. It's not a serious question. So the government has all this excess cheese. You can ask your government, hey, what do you think the government's going to do? You can ask your class, what do you think the government's going to do to get rid of all this uh, all this excess cheese? Okay. All right. Then at the end of the video, we have these end of the video um, discussion questions. And similar, similarly to with price ceilings, you know, the idea you want to convey is all the inefficiencies introduced by the price control. We have this price floor. Now we're doing all the stuff. The government's buying up excess cheese. If you watch the video, they're doing a, uh, they're doing government cheese. They're doing the Got Milk campaign. There's just a lot of unintended consequences here. All right. Now we go to graphing the welfare um, effects. So we have consumer surplus, producer surplus. Okay. Price floor comes in. Who gains? Well, your students Blaine be Benedict. He's a sugar beet farmer here in Sabin, Minnesota, and he runs a farm with his two brothers. It's a hard conversation to come out onto someone's fourth generation farm and say, why do you get this special treatment? Why do you deserve a special line written in a bill that guarantees a minimum price for your product? Blaine Benedict. All right. So that illustrates the farmers, the people who had grow sugar, the producers are the ones who often benefit from the price control. So the consumer surplus goes way down. You can see that here, goes from there to this smaller triangle. The producer surplus can go up if the amount they gain is greater than the amount they lose. Now, of course, if they get the government to buy the excess, they're gonna get all this um, as, uh, as well. All right, dead weight loss again is this triangle. These are all the transactions that would have taken place in the free market that no longer take place. All right, then we have an interactive practice where the students can practice these graphing, these surplus changes. Bunch of questions for your students in their, um, uh, in their student activity sheet. And then an exit ticket just to test you know, their knowledge and a bit to foreshadow the next day. Why do producers like price floors? Well, it's a guaranteed higher price. So their surplus can go up. All right, that's day two. If you want the unit plan, it should be here. And then you can click through to the next video if you wanna keep going through these slides.